you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, then please go check out my Patreon page. Over there, I'm doing exclusive artwork that you won't see anywhere else. Please check out patreon.com slash radpencils. Hey everybody, it is uh, Friday, so it is vlog day. So we're gonna do a little bit of a different uh, comic haul today. We're actually gonna be heading into that closet in there and we're gonna be looking at some of the books that I have gotten in the past that I haven't read yet. We're gonna be doing some image, we're gonna do some Marvel DC, some of the hard covers, trade paperbacks I haven't read, some indie uh, series that you may not have heard of, but uh, we're gonna go check it out and then gonna see uh, what we come out with. Thought it'd be as good of a time as any to maybe go through some of my image comic books. Uh, I had a whole bunch I still need to read, and this is pretty much the majority of the pile of what I've got left to go. I'm trying to clear out some of the stuff so you can see some of my uh, stuff I still got to go left to read. A lot of different titles going on around here, uh, Intersect by Ray Fox. Oh, there goes my camera. <laughs> Got Sex by Joe Casey, Near Death, Lazarus, uh, number six. I think I have a couple of the first issues laying around somewhere. I don't know. Uh, if you're not onto this book, Monstrous by Marjorie Lou Isana Takeda, you got to get on it. It is just pure genius magic artwork at its finest. It's so good. I don't want to tell you anything about it just because it's you gotta just get on to it it's just it's it's a it's monsters then we got yeah monsters <laughs> god I'm terrible uh right now i've got fatal here i think i have the entire series i have not read it but it's brubaker it's sean phillips you can't go wrong with those two god, yeah like i said i have the whole series it's one of those ones where i kind of wanted to get the whole thing and then just blitz through and read the the entire series in one go uh, right now, as we started, we got the new version of Kick-Ass, and this might be Volume 4. Uh, Mark Millar taking it on with John Romita. I get anything that has Mark Millar, and especially anything with John Romita Jr. They are two of my faves. Uh, the series goes goes on, and I think it changes, yeah, seems to Steve Niles. I'm not too familiar. Marcello Fruzen, I don't know his stuff, but I will get to it eventually. Probably the best image series, in my opinion, Southern Bastards by Aaron and Latour. Uh, it's so cool. It's kind of like, um, whenever I tell people about to read this thing, it's basically, it's like Walking Tall, but with the biggest gut punch you could ever get into a series. It's, it's really cool. It's really down and gritty, dirty kind of stuff about a small town that's corrupted. Yeah, small town corrupt corruption. So, give that a shot. Uh, Descender. Uh, try to always support Canadian talent. Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. I don't think he's Canadian, or is he? I can't remember. But uh, Descender. Yeah, I've only gone through issue one. And that was a while ago. I might have to dig it back up just so I can get a refresher. But watercolored, painted pages. It's really beautiful looking stuff, and it's sci-fi. So I really dig it. Uh, any image fan has to be getting Sex Criminals. The Fraction and Zdarsky is always really, really good. Um, yeah, I went through the first couple issues. I kind of had to stop just because my wife was kind of not really wanting me to be reading it. She didn't feel very comfortable me reading that kind of stuff, which is weird because it doesn't really have to deal with that kind of thing. But whatever. It's to each his own. Uh, of course, you got to get Saga. I'm on 26 right now. It's one of those ones I always have to pick up every month, but because then delays would happen or I'd be reading other other series, I'd, I'd usually forget what was going on or I'd be a very long lapse of where I came, where last time I checked. So I had to, I saw it for a bit and then I just started picking them up back up and now I've got a huge stack going on. So that'll be another one I'll blitz through. Uh, yeah, the one that started it all was Spawn for me. I was so big into Tom McFarlane. I still am pretty a big fan of his. So I have some back issues here. I have already read these guys, 16 and 17, that I have laying down. 
but uh, I just have them in this pile. I might just put them in my long box a little bit later. But uh, yeah, there's a couple issues like in the 200s there, some of the newer current stuff. You can see when Todd came back and he started doing these homage covers that are just so freaking cool. I think the one is coming that I love. That's really fun, that's a cool cover. Yeah, this one, the ones that he did when he was on Batman and doing that homage cover to that one with Batman, yeah, that, I love that one, it's so freaking cool. Uh, Mind the Gap, I haven't read this one in a while, but it's a really good series, I really dig it. I, again, I'm only on issue five here and I still have a couple more left to go. I might have to go back in and uh, give it another reread just so I can get uh, caught up again and figure out what's going on. Low is another one I really like. It's anything by Rick Remender. I suggest I have two series, Black Science as well. Uh, these are ver these are issues one and two respectively, between each series. So I have I have to actually get on it and and read them. So those are really cool. And uh, yeah, those are the those are the image series that I still have left to read. If you have any other suggestions, you always just let me know in the comments. So now we are in the closet here. Now I got three boxes <laughs> full of just trade paperbacks, hardcover kind of stuff. Stuff that I usually collect if um, it's either books that I already own, the single issues like this Craven Last Hunt, I have all those issues. Or stuff that I maybe missed out on the singles and wanted to uh, jump on. And grab at least get to read them and then just jump on and grab some of the stuff. So there's some stuff. Kick it in there. Yeah, I wanted to try try this book. I think I saw this in uh yeah, in a goodwill. Wanted to give it a shot. See, it looks really beautiful on the inside. And uh yeah, so right here I got some hardcovers. I now own the entire series of um the runaways. If you saw my last uh comic haul video i had a whole bunch that i got from uh from what's the two sits <laughs> from boxing day so i was able to grab that whole series uh tina fey's book i want to read that because i love tina fey it's in my thing got some scott pilgrims i've never read scott pilgrim but i found these at uh valley village so i want to give them a shot and give them a read yeah, I found Fables number one there, Seven to Eternity, which is really cool. Got some Humanoids, Terry Dodson, which I love his artwork. I'll try something new with that. There's a whole bunch in there I don't want to actually go through and, uh, and pick out, but we'll see what else I can get from this box. Next to the Sim next to uh, the X-Men, the Simpsons are next are one of my biggest loves in life. Um, I always wanted to get artwork done that's at least officially The Simpsons. Uh, since Bongo unfortunately went under, that's kind of uh, limited to where I can actually go for that kind of stuff. But I found a whole bunch of trades in the flea markets or, or in um, thrift stores. So definitely that was a really cool buy there. So we got some Hack and Slash, some Goldfish, some old Bendez. Trades got some haunt. Uh, Tom McFarland, Ryan Notley. I think Kirkman's on there. Yeah, Kirkman's on there for sure. Got a whole bunch of those. Invincible. I've been slowly getting all of those guys. I missed the first initial run of the book, so I'm getting them all in trades. Manifest Destiny. That's a really cool book. Um, I believe it's about uh, Lewis and Clark, but with some kind of fantasy sci-fi edge to it it's really really fun uh birthright i heard is really really cool so i want to give that one a shot and a whole bunch of the walking dead i've i stopped for a while just because i was uh yeah i had to take a break from it it was getting a little bit too much or not much enough for me so i had to stop so but i have them all i got them all on sale so i just sit here ready to go X-Men Evolution, which is a very underrated cartoon if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, the artwork for the books are really, really cool. So I want to have those in the collection. Got some Exiles, The Order, which I'm really excited to read. Uh, old School Fantastic Four versus the X-Men. Some fun. 
any of the annihilation stuff you gotta check out it's so freaking cool so the stuff you can see how it came at, to be for the marvel uh cosmic edge x-men forever which is basically chris claremont continuing his run of the x-men of what he would have done if he didn't leave after x-men number three so really interesting stuff that he chose to do for it uh tom grumman is really really cool i love his style very simple very cool Ninety stuff so we're back on to that yeah. all right so we're gonna start off we're gonna end this and with the beginning uh in that one box full of hard covers so i have a whole bunch of these um season one marvel hard covers where it's basically a contemporary retelling of marvel heroes origin stories so it starts yeah it has a whole bunch of different ones that by current creators that came on to the books just to give them a shot i have a whole bunch i think that's it's a really cool concept the fact that there's a whole bunch of different ones i read one so far and it was of the x-men and it was actually really cool it's really different it's nothing like how the ultimates universe did it where it was a total reimagining these guys aren't reimagining anything they're just putting a little bit of a little bit of a wrinkle new new kind of twists and turns to the the original mythos and this by some creators that i really like uh colin bun's really cool howard chaykin doing iron man which is really really interesting to check out peter david doing the avengers fred van lent roberto aguirre sacasa doing the fantastic four if you don't know who he is, he's actually the, the main head honcho of Archie comic books right now. David Marquez, who is just, yeah, he's a beast. His stuff is really, really crisp and clean. So, yeah, it's just a fun little read just to check out. If, you, if you're a big, big Marvel guy and you just want some different one-and-done kind of stories, these are really cool just to check out. But now back to the main stuff where we got some uh, Brightest Day Birds of Prey stuff. Uh, Gail Simone, I believe, and especially, yeah, with this one, this one's actually not the one I'm talking about, but we'll go back to that. Uh, Birds of Prey, I actually picked this book up at Gail Simone's table during Emerald City. She just had a whole bunch, just, she was just getting rid of a whole bunch of things that she had, so I want to give this a shot. Uh, I got really into Birds of Prey. I have a lot of her run with Ed Benes, or Benes, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so really, really cool crisp artwork so definitely a buy for me uh wonder woman by alan heinberg and terry dodson just because you know that i love terry dodson and and rachel dodson's work so kind of check it out i picked this series up in singles when it first came out so i was able to get the first issue but then couldn't get the last of it i think i gave that first issue away to my wife so that she can actually play around with it and take a look so i don't know if i still have that issue uh this one not too known about this guy but i know it's freaking crazy because now my eyes actually hurt just looking at it it's a 3d book all done in black and white also by david marquez that name has popped up so if you're reading currently marvel he was doing Avengers, he was doing Iron Man. So I think I picked this one up at his table as well. So again, another one of those ones I wanted to take a look and see. So there's some 3D glasses are right back there. Give that one a read one of these days. And of course, getting into a classic here. Again, 300. This one has been sitting in my box for a long, long time. I'm a huge fan of Frank Miller. Anything he's done, I really, really enjoy. But, uh, I love the movie. I uh, wanted to give a shot, get a shot to reading the actual book. His stuff can be kind of wordy and kind of crazy. So, but hey, it's Frank Miller. I dig his stuff. Uh, maybe not a fan of some of his outer comic book ideas, but hey, why not give it a shot? Uh, this one is actually a pretty interesting. I might just turn the whole thing around. There we go. Uh, claw. I wanted to check this one out because I don't know anything about it, but the cover really interested me. And then I went inside and flipped through the book, and I love the artwork. Very simple line work, very simple designs. So, 
really, really cool just to see something different and a style that I really, really enjoy to re have a little bit of cartooniness, a little bit just a clean line work and sharp, crisp storytelling. Give it a shot. So yeah, something that I just solely based on the cover that I wanted to check out. So it's okay to get, especially when you buy it. But uh, it's it looks just looks interesting. It looks different. So I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, another one of those books that I based it all on the cover, but I was able to check out the interior. Is this Love the Tiger? There's a whole bunch of different ones about this series. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know anything about it. But when you crack open the inside, like come on that is some gorgeous stuff i don't think there's actually any interior dialogue in it I, it's literally just storytelling without any words and if you can tell a story and have it make sense without any words you are a phenomenal storyteller because you don't need the dialogue you don't need the exposition to tell what's going on so i got this solely for the artwork and it's based on just that i think i got my money's worth because this looks gorgeous and uh, special pricing with uh, Grace and Rucka's Black Widow. Uh, I was trying to grab some Black Widow stuff just so I could see where they might go with uh, the announced movies. So there's some stuff that I had missed. And it's all um, the stuff from the Marvel Knights, which is always really, really cool. So I wanted to give that one a shot. Uh, this one, I was able to pick up the Guardians of the Galaxy when it got rebooted through uh, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. This is some of the best Guardians of the Galaxy you'll ever read, and it's the and this is the series that introduced the the cast that we all know and love right now. And it's also drawn by Paul Pelletier, who's one of my favorites. He has he's another one that has really clean line work and great character designs and really cool stuff. So I really love his artwork. So I'm really glad I was able to pick up his his run. I don't have all the single issues because I'm sure they've blown up in cost. So yeah, I'm just trying to find the original uh, hardcovers, trade paperbacks of this series so I can get the whole run on how it all works, especially during War of the Kings and Annihilation. Uh, this book I found, I think I, I got this one for free. Some of the old Roy Thomas, uh, Dick Giordano, Dracula. So really classic looking horror stuff. I might be cracking this one open when I work on my own horror book. Just because, yeah, just look at this stuff. If I can't get any of the Bernie Wrights and stuff, this might be a good way to to see how it, how you use blacks and as your storytelling abilities just to show depth and character with just black, white, and gray. So that one, that one's a pretty cool looking find and has like a little, makes it feel like it's a true book, almost like of literature. 